I know we want to turn to Dr. John Torres, our medical correspondent, on, on a couple of them. And Dr. John, I mean, the first question I have is, you know, Jennifer, her sister, feels like the fact that she had COVID-19 affected her brain, that she was just a different person. Is there any evidence? Um, I, I know it's early. This is a novel virus. We're just learning. Is there any evidence of, of impact on the brain? And Savannah, we do know that it impacts the brain, but the connection between the impact and mental health is something we're still struggling to figure out. And it's going to take time to figure it out. But what we do know is that people start, have had seizures, they've had stroke-like symptoms, they've had what's called encephalitis, which is inflammation of the brain. And after they have something like that, a lot of times they end up having anxiety, increased stress, they can't handle that as well, and they end up having depression. So it's very possible that she had encephalitis or some issue like that with her brain because of the COVID-19, and that left her with this type of depression that she was having a large struggle with. And so again, we're, we're still struggling, we're still trying to understand this virus and figure out what exactly is going on, but it's definitely possible that that could have happened and that could have altered her brain and, and the way she was thinking. And like her sister said, it, it wasn't the same person afterwards. Yeah. And then adding to that, the fact that she was right in the fire. I mean, they, the family likens it to a firefighter running into the burning building. There she went. You yourself are an ER doctor. You know this dynamic. You know the stressful situation. And so many times there's a stigma. You know, doctors and nurses and, and frontline workers don't feel like they can say, hey, I need help. I need a break. And Savannah, this hits very close to home because this is the life I lead as well. A lot of my colleagues going through the same type of thing. And what happens when you're in an emergency room on a regular basis, it's not unusual, especially if you're in a trauma center, to see bad trauma, heart attacks, people dying, having to tell families they lost a loved one on a daily basis. And you have to be able to do that. And at the same time, you have to be able to disconnect and move on to the next patient. Plus, when you go home, you don't want to take that with you. You don't want your family to really understand what's going on there. You want to separate them. And so when you go home, you you leave that behind you leave that in the car and that's really hard to deal with because you end up internalizing that a lot and then uh, you also have the stigma of being a doctor where you are the one that's supposed to be healing you're not the one that's supposed to be sick and there is something to that you know physicians make the worst patients because mm. a lot of times we don't want to tell people that things are going on especially our colleagues who are working extra hard and like they talked about with Lorna you're at the end of your shift if another trauma comes in if another COVID-19 patient comes in you don't want to leave because you're leaving your colleagues to do all the work and you feel like you need to stay there extra minutes to try and help them out. And that just adds on to extra hours, which adds on to that stress because you're not getting sleep. So all that piles on to all the issues you're seeing, all the conditions you're seeing in the death. That really, yeah. uh, unfortunately, really starts affecting you after a while. And that's, that's where the burnout comes from. And that's where all these other issues come from as well. Well, Dr. John Torres, thank you so much. I, uh, we're asking so much of our healthcare workers right now, and uh, we just want to say thank you again to Jennifer and Corey for sharing this story. It wasn't easy. Their website is drlornabreen.com. They're raising money for mental health programs for frontline workers. If you are struggling or if you know someone who's struggling, we want to put this number on the screen, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, 1-800-273-273. 8255. You can always talk to somebody. <laughs>